The railway keeps the country moving. It carries us to work and gets us to school, brings us together and takes us away. The railway's there for us, our families and our friends. And it's massive. 20,000 miles of track, 2,500 stations, 30,000 bridges and tunnels, moving 24,000 trains and millions of passenger journeys a day. And it's not just passengers. We move huge amounts of freight across the UK by rail every day. Goods from food, phones, cars and containers, heading to all types of stores and supermarkets. Train travel is an efficient, environmentally friendly and safe way to get people and goods where they need to be. And we're always trying to make it safer. But that's not always a simple job. To start with, trains are fast and very, very heavy. They can't swerve or change course quickly. And with so much momentum, a driver won't be able to stop in time if they spot danger ahead. It takes the length of 20 football pitches for a train to come to a full stop. That's why we do everything we can to keep the railway safe. And that means keeping you away from the tracks. We want everyone home safe every day. Everyone who uses the railway, works on the railway or lives by the railway deserves to be safe. But we can't do that all on our own. We need you to do your part. And you're about to find out how. Britain's rail network is a wonder of engineering, transporting millions of people every day, quickly, reliably and safely. Network Rail uses cutting-edge technology and strict safety standards to make sure that rail is one of the safest possible modes of transport. This film's about how you can stay safe in the dangerous places where roads, rail and footpaths meet. Level crossings. Years ago, when the rail network was first being built, Engineers couldn't afford to build bridges and tunnels at every point where the railway crossed a road. So instead, they created level crossings, places that allowed people to cross the railway safely. We now have around 6,000 level crossings across the UK and they come in all shapes and sizes, from footpaths across the railway to busy road crossings with hundreds of cars and pedestrians going through every hour. While no two crossings are ever the same, they do all have one thing in common. They are all potentially very dangerous places. So it's really important that you follow these key tips to keep you, your family and friends safe when using them. Firstly, and most importantly, be alert. It's really easy to get distracted, especially by phones and music. So take your headphones off, put your phone away and stop Look and listen. Never assume that the railway is clear or that someone else is looking out for you. And always expect a train. In quieter areas, you may come across crossings with gates that you open and close yourself, like this one. And if you see this sign by a gated crossing, it means that you need to check that the railway is clear yourself before crossing. These crossings don't have alarms or warning lights to alert you of an approaching train. So take care, stop, look and listen. Always look both ways before and immediately after opening the gates. Close the gates and cross. And if you're in a group, always make sure that there's enough room for you all to get across safely. If you've got a dog, always keep it on its lead. Its safety is your responsibility. Some crossings have warning lights and alarms. If they're sounding, don't cross. A train will be approaching at speed. And just because a train has passed, doesn't mean it's safe to cross. Another one could be coming from either direction. 
never cross until the lights stop flashing and the alarms stop. We're doing everything we can to make sure level crossings are as safe as possible. But while there are still cyclists, drivers and pedestrians taking risks, there's always the chance that accidents will happen. Don't be part of the problem. Decades ago, we replaced steam trains with cleaner, more efficient diesel ones. And we're now looking to replace diesel trains as much as possible with cleaner and quieter electric trains. Railway electricity is delivered either by overhead lines, which suit high-speed trains, or by something we call the third rail, an extra rail to the side of the track which is used on some slower routes. By using electricity, the railway is becoming more environmentally friendly. But there is a downside. Trains are, of course, very heavy. A passenger train can weigh 400 tonnes, the equivalent to 80 elephants. And to move something that heavy very quickly requires a lot of power. And that means a lot of electricity. Between 750 and 25,000 volts. That's 100 times more powerful than the electricity you get at home. And that much electricity makes it one of the most dangerous factors when stepping onto the railway. And it's always on. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, even when there are no trains. Never underestimate how dangerous railway electricity is. You don't even need to touch anything to be electrocuted. At 25,000 volts, electricity can jump through the air like lightning and strike three meters from the overhead lines. It can also strike you through something you're holding, meaning balloons, kites or fishing rods should never be allowed anywhere near the overhead line. The powered third rail is a danger that hides in plain sight. It appears to be an ordinary rail, but it carries 750 volts of electricity. And if you're unfortunate enough to touch one, the current has the power to hold you to the rail and cause serious harm. Please don't take risks with rail electricity. Stay off the tracks, keep away from the cables, and whatever you do, stay safe. Railway lines are fenced off from the public for very good reason. Inside the fence is a very dangerous place. There are high-powered electric cables capable of causing terrible injury. Bridges and tunnels with no room to take shelter. And the constant threat of sudden collision. With massively heavy, fast-moving trains operating day and night. It might appear that deserted railway locations like these are perfect for exploring or for taking a shortcut across railway lines. But thinking these empty tracks are safe for you and your friends to cross or mess about on could be a big mistake. And here's why. Modern trains are extremely fast and so quiet they give you no time to react and at top speed they can cover the length of a football field in less than two seconds. The only way to stay safe is to stay clear. Entering railway property or stepping onto the tracks without permission is trespassing. Trespassing is both illegal and very, very dangerous. By reducing delays, danger and damage to the railway, we can make sure everyone gets home safe, secure and on time. And that's why we have the British Transport Police. Hi, I'm Beth. I'm a police officer with the British Transport Police and I've been doing this job for about three and a half years. The British Transport Police are basically a dedicated police force that focus on providing safe travel for railway passengers and also protecting the railway. Our network of uniformed police officers, um, plainclothes police officers and over 150,000 CCTV cameras are monitoring you 24-7 when you use the railway network. 
we are here to look out for you, but if you do commit an offence when you're on the railway, it, it will be monitored and will be seen. We will charge, we will convict for them if it's deemed appropriate, and getting a criminal record can be detrimental to your future. Um, it can not only stop you from getting the job you want, it could restrict your travel to other countries, places like America and Australia will not let you into their country if you have a criminal record. Um, and really that's not something you want as a consequence of simple trespass or disruption on the railway. Over the past few months I've dealt with far too many deaths on the railway um, where a person has been killed when they've been struck by a train and they've been on the railway when they shouldn't be. The incident itself I am okay with dealing with. I can be a police officer at the time and deal with the incident on scene but the hardest part of the job is going to a home of a relative, a mum, a dad, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, grandma and telling them that their loved one has died and isn't coming home because they made the mistake and they've gone on the railway and as a consequence they're not coming home. My message is don't do it, don't go on the railway, it's, it's incredibly dangerous and even though I've talked about the effects of the criminal prosecutions and the effect it has on yourself, think about other people, think about your family and your friends that want you to survive, want you to live a life. There's no guarantee that you will come off those tracks if you go on them.